From the earliest steam powered bicycles to the choppers and sport bikes we all know today, the motorcycle has gone through a great deal of evolution over the years. Motorcycle culture has also seen a great deal of change, from the veterans group that formed the first motorcycle clubs to the outlaw biker stereotypes of the 60s and 70s and the incredibly diverse landscape of motorcycling today. The 1950s, 60s and 70s were the textbook era of revival, creativity, attitude and revolution. The world would soon be thrust into a time of reimagination, new ideas and perspectives that had been brewing and festering for the last two decades would finally see the light of day in the 50s and 60s. And the motorcycle had its own profound effects on the people and attitudes that would soon reshape the globe. Motorcycle culture would begin to take root in societies around the world, varying region by region, but all sharing a commonality in counterculture, rebellion and style. Many of the political and cultural icons of the first half of the 20th century developed their own personal sense of independence, power and grandeur thanks in part to the essence of riding a motorcycle. The British love affair with the motorcycle soon gave way to a cultural phenomenon that's since spread across the globe, epitomizing the coming of age attitude of legions of young riders. The Ace Cafe has been a stronghold of motorcycle history, culture and lore for generations. Originally built as a truck stop in the late 30s, the Ace was destroyed by a German air raid in 1940 and rebuilt in 1949 where the infamous Tana Boys rocker subculture of North London took refuge under its roof. Rock and roll, racing, leather jackets and the booming British motorcycle industry gave rise to a unique style of bike, the Cafe Racer, of which cafe patrons would challenge each other to races round the block. A jukebox rock song would be played and a racer would have to successfully depart and arrive back to the table before the song would end. The cafe style bike helped the British scene develop a sense of identity that rivaled the American outlaw brand of riding, uniting bikers in the counterculture. In 1953, the Cuban Revolution begins, a revolt against foreign oppression of Cuban soil by the Castro brothers and an Argentine doctor named Ernesto Che Guevara. Che Guevara's left-wing socio-political Marxist ideologies were first shaped by a South American motorcycle trip aboard a single-cylinder 1939 Norton 500cc motorcycle affectionately named La Pedrosa, the Mighty One, that took him from his home in Buenos Aires to Chile, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela and Panama. Che Guevara recorded a powerful memoir of his motorcycle voyage in the Motorcycle Diaries, notes on a Latin American journey encountering foreign interest, poverty, suffering and inequality, Che Guevara's note and helped shape in however a small role the eventual Cuban revolution and a distinct socio-cultural shift in the western world. Then in 1969 came the movie Easy Rider, a stereotypical media induced denomination of the typical outlaw biker. Motorcycles and their riders were thereafter cemented as road thrashing freedom seekers synonymous with the open road. By the 1960s, the Japanese had built and mastered the engineering of superb motorcycles. Japanese bikes including Honda, Kawasaki, Suzuki and Yamaha experienced very slow sales upon their release in the West but soon caught the Americans and Europeans off guard with their superior, sophisticated bikes. They easily outmatched the quality, technology and performance of domestic models. Increased competition meant increased sense of purpose and innovation amongst the established motorcycle manufacturing industry. Racing and competition again became a focal point of motorcycle riding with horsepower, torque and speed at the forefront of importance. Along with power 
came vastly refined suspension, handling and braking. By the 1970s, Honda introduced its revolutionary transverse four-cylinder four-stroke engines, which changed the landscapes of motorcycle again forever. Competition increased again, and when the legendary Suzuki Hayabusa reached a speed exceeding 310 km per hour, forced a gentleman's agreement between manufacturers in 1999, fearing a ban or regulatory measure on Japanese and European bikes, agreed to limit machines to 300 km per hour, putting an end to what was called the speed wars. Today, Motorcycles come with more technological advances and features than their originators could have ever dreamt of. The bikes themselves have changed dramatically, but the zest for life, so closely tied to riding a motorcycle, has remained constant. Motorcycles are special because they epitomize the bond between man and machine, a symbiotic relationship that's always, at its very core, been about respect, style, and above all else, a feeling of freedom. If you like this video, then hit that like button, and if you haven't watched the first part of the series, I strongly urge you to click the link below and go check it out. If you like to catch more motorcycle related content like this, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one.